Thank you for staying with KTN Prime. We're still focusing on the Mpeketoni attacks and that announcement that was made today by President Uhuru Kenyatta saying that attack was not carried out by Al-Shabaab. I'm joined in studio by Andrew Franklin. He's a security expert and a former Marine who's lived in Kenya for over 33 years. Thank you so much for joining us on KTN tonight. Um, yesterday we had a statement from Al-Shabaab claiming responsibility for yes. the attacks in Pekotoni. Yes. Today we have President Uhuru Kenyatta saying this has nothing to do with Al-Shabaab. What do you make of, of, of the two? Well, Al-Shabaab has never uh, claimed responsibility for something it didn't commit. In fact, the, the recent events uh, with bu buses being blown up on the Thika Highway, uh, bombs going off in Kikamba and elsewhere, if the, the major, the big controversy has recently been that they haven't claimed responsibility mm. for these terrorist acts. The, the level of organization that went into this attack on, on this, this settlement area involved a tremendous amount of logistics, a lot of ammunition, automatic weapons, and planning. It, it wasn't just hit and run. These are not cattle raiders. This is not uh, uh, clashes that we've seen in the past. These are, this is fairly sophisticated. And I, I'm concerned that uh, the ability to overrun a police station, to steal weapons, to essentially run riot in a town for four and a half hours, killing men of a particular ethnic group is true, but also Christian. In other words, this is a target that intelligence should have picked up because it is an anomaly in Lamu County, although not a, the demographic shift in the last 20 years has seen many so-called Kenyans moving to the, these areas inhabited by ethnic Somalis and other people. Uh, so that what you have now is a situation where these are targets. We need to look at how many other settlement towns mm. are exposed. Okay, we're looking at how many other settlement towns, uh, towns are exposed, but let's look at the attack and the hallmarks of it. Let's look at the targets. These people went burning banks, uh, hotels, they went to the police station. From your experience, you've worked in the region. What does that point you to? It points me to Al-Shabaab because there's, apparently there wasn't even a mosque in that town. Mm -hmm. This is very typical of the kinds of attacks in Wajir and Garissa and Mandera since October 2011. The attacks on churches that, that were located in police compounds at the end of June 2012, less than a, about a month after Asanan's ex expo was blown up, uh, indicates that they're, they're targeting the outsiders, the aliens in this environment, because the demographic shifts. They're targeting hotels where liquor is sold. Mm -hmm. They're dividing the newcomers, the people who have moved into these areas in the last 30 years or 20 years, who set up businesses, the security forces. They're dividing them from the bulk of the native population or the indigenous population. All right, hold on to that thought. Um, in just a few minutes, we'll be getting back to that discussion. Let's look at uh, the Mpeketoni attack and Mpeketoni in studio. I'm with Fra uh, Andrew Franklin, security expert who has lived in the country for over 33 years. Thank you for staying with us. Um, just listening into uh, Ferdinand Omondi's story, the is a bite from a woman who says people would come ask for identity cards and they would ask you where have you gotten land and the president says this is not al-shabaab um what are the chances really that maybe there's a militia group militia like group at the coastal region that is doing this well the militia group that would be doing it uh, might be the mrc except that they are legal and their their armed wing seems to be very ineffective although it did attack the police on March 4th, 2013, on Election Day, and then subsequently. But it doesn't seem to have the weapons. It doesn't have the organization. To, you know, and by being legal, the real question becomes, uh, wh why would they suddenly go after a group of people in a, go in a small corner of Lamu County? Mm. Uh, I don't see any, They're not going to ethnically cleanse the coast. There's no, there's no real chance of that. Uh, and as a result, it... The fact that, that al-Shabaab took responsibility for this attack, the fact that they seem to be in the area, hence the uh, nine additional dead, the real question is, where are the police we saw on the ground who came to reinforce? Yes, because more people died overnight. Yes. Where are the police now that, other, that civilians are now being told to go sit in the bush where it's safe? Are they being guarded by police? Is there? I didn't see any tents. I saw no uh, uh, effort by the security forces to protect these people. Basically, not so much is being done. 
I would suggest very little, if anything, is now being done. The, the real problem is that who, who owns the night in that area? Is it, are there, is it a militia or is it the police? Is it the military or is it a militia? Is it al-Shabaab? In, in essence, who controls the area when the sun goes down? And based on Sunday night, it seems that whether it's a militia or al-Shabaab, which did take responsibility for this attack, they control the night. Oh, all right. Um, this country has been choking with the insecurity for a while now. You are an expert in this area. What are we doing wrong as a country? No, we're not doing anything wrong as a country. Mm. The, the leadership on both sides of the political divide, is they're not looking at the laws. The laws that have been passed since the new constitution was enacted in 2010, the National Police Service Act has not been implemented. We have no unified police service in this country mm -hmm. yet. The Kenya Defense Forces Act passed in August of 2012. The K KDF now are f is full of fine troops, fine officers. They're now being kept inside the borders of this country to, to assist the police. What this does, it means that we don't see a need to actually implement the National Police Service Act. And by the same token, we're not actually implementing the KDF Act of 2012. We're not putting into place the reforms that are in these acts to actually give us a modern security structure. When someone talks about reorganizing the National Intelligence Service, the real question is why don't we implement the, NI the NIS Act of 2012? Mm. The National Security Council Act. These are fine pieces of legislation which are which all which actually hang together they right. make a lot of sense but we're not implementing anything all right so we have so many things that we're not implementing probably that's why we are here thank you so much for joining us on ktn prime and for speaking to us andrew franklin security expert former marine who has lived in the country for over 33 years sharing his experience on what's going on in the country